how to use the path operations in Photoshop with shapes. It could be any shape. It could be custom shapes, stars, rectangles, shapes you've created yourself. I'm going to use circles. So the key panel is layers. So window menu and layers. And I'm using a shape layer. And this time, every time you create a shape, it will be created as a new layer. But I don't want that. I want to combine the new shape with the existing circle. So how do I do that? Well, I always refresh everything. I just go back to the move tool, go to the upboard, deselect everything, then click on the ellipse or whatever shape it is, and then go back to the circle and then to the path operations. And this time I'm going to go with combine shape. So it's not going to create a new layer. You see a little plus appear there. Now drag in there, it will drag over that circle and it will combine with the original circle. You don't have to go over the circle. You can actually create circles further afield. You can repeat that over and over again. Create all kinds of unique shapes. So you can just create a circle not touching any of the other circles. And they're all using the same option. If you change the tool, if you go and change the tool at this point, suddenly that combine is no longer of use. You have to go back and reset everything again. So always refresh everything, go to the move tool, click on the artboard to completely deselect everything, Remember to go over to the ellipse, so you select it again over there in the layers panel, and then the circle tool, and then the path operations, and then go with the subtract. Just makes everything fresh, and you can start knowing that you will create what you expect, which is, in this case, a subtraction from the original shape. And you can repeat that, just chopping away from the original shape, as well as the circles you've created with the combine. And you've got a little minus there in the cursor, so. And again, that will be active until you change it. Change the tool or go up to the path operations and maybe change it to intersect or one of the others. So with that one select, you can see that one selected. What you can then do is you can go up to the combine in the path operations or intersect so you can change them. Exclude or intersect. Again, refresh everything. Just go to the move tool. Deselect everything. Then go to the layers panel. And that's just the way it works for me. You may find it you don't need some of the steps, but that's the way I always like to do it. And now I've got the intersect option in the path operations. So I draw a circle now slightly away from any of the other paths. Drag over some of the existing path. All that's been created afterwards is the bit that overlaps. Show it best with a completely fresh design, I think. But you've got to decide, just quickly create another circle. It's going to be a new layer. Makes sense, it's always a new layer. Because sometimes it's left over. It's left over as a subtract or something. That's why I like to refresh it. So move tool, deselect everything, select it in the ellipse over there in the layers, select the circle tool again or any other shape, and then go to path operations, intersect. Create a new circle. And then what you see is you've got the, the circle that you've just created. The bit that's away from it doesn't exist. The bit that overlaps with the original circle remains. You can repeat that again and again. Of course, you can just add multiple. But of course, once you've got down to a very, very small chunk of pass, it's a bit harder to, to uh, cut it even more.
So you've got that, again, intersection there. Now, if you want to refresh it, you can go and do that. But you can also, as I showed earlier, you can just change them at any point. So now I'm just going to go with the path operations, exclude. So what happens? It's the opposite of the intersection. So you've got the circle that you newly created circle. The bit that didn't have any path is left. The circle that's not touched by the circle is left. The bit that overlaps is removed. Again, if you go back to intersect or subtract, you can see you can change it again. So it's a very flexible way of using the path operations. But what you can do also, you can just go there to, I'm just selecting the, with it selected, go over to the direct selection tool in the tools panel, and you can select that path, and you can move it around. So that subtraction is moved so you can chop out different parts you can move it you can also resize it you can also manipulate the individual points so you can just drag it around all over the place and it will still be a subtraction creating a donut design there now with the direct selection tool what you can do you can select that that point or any of the other points select that point there And then you can just drag it. So you can change what the shape is of the subtraction. You can also modify the anchor points there. So you can create some very, very abstract shapes just by using that, that feature. Again, to refresh everything again, just go to the Move tool if you want. But otherwise, if you want to actually merge all the shapes, you can do go over to Path Operations with that selected like that and use the merge shape components. Up to you. So now I've just gone to the move tool, deselected everything again, go to the ellipse tool, and again go for the circle. Again, it could be star, it could be a rectangle. And I'm gonna go with combined shapes. So you can add some more shapes there. Once you've done that, you can what you can do, you can go down to Merge Shape Components. So it's all combined into one unique new shape. Now, what you can also do once you've done that, of course, is you can go and save it as custom shape. So I'm just going to create a completely fresh new... Oh, I like doing this each time. I know maybe that's a bit over the top, slows things down, but I just wanted to create a completely fresh circle, move tool, deselect, go to the ellipse panel, uh, to the layers panel, select the ellipse, and then go back to, in this case, instead of that, I'm just going to use the pen tool. So you can use the pen tool as well as the curvature tool. So pen tool, and that's using shape, of course, and that uses exactly the same combined shapes, subtract in the path operations. So you can click there, add a point, go out. So that slice, the bit, is completely subtracted. Now you can still go to the path operations and change to intersect if you wish, or combine, because it's active at that point. So, and also you can go to merge shape components if you wish. Now, if you go to the curvature pen tool at this point, I'm just going to show you what happens when you just go to the curvature pen tool, just select that. It would then create a new layer. So it's best again, go to the move tool, deselect everything completely fresh, 
go over to the layers panel, select the ellipse, then go to the curvature tool. And then when you create it, and I'm going to show you guys what happens this time, because I forgot to, uh, it creates a new layer. Now, I don't want that because that's the default operation. Once you've done all the reset, it doesn't know about the combine, etc. at that point. So what you need to do is set the subtract or combine. So I'm going to go with subtract. Now, what you can do, it will subtract from that. So it's always the key thing is always remember to go to, once you've done all your operation with the pen tool, curvature tool, etc., go to the move tool, deselect everything by clicking the artboard and then go into the layers, click the ellipse and then go back to the curvature tool or whatever. And now you can still manipulate the curvature tool, do all the various things you normally can do with the curvature tool. And there's tutorials about that if you wish. You can also add layer styles. So I'm just going to add a quick bevel. I'm not going to add anything more. So you can see with the curvature tool still selected. And I haven't touched any other tool. As soon as you touch another tool, it will all be set back to new layer, etc. And again, you can add additional points to the curvature. And again, as I mentioned, there's lots of tutorials about the curvature tool as well. And you can manipulate the and you can manipulate the inner part of that design as much as you wish. And again, you could add with the combined shapes and the curvature tool, additional pass further away. Again, select the move tool, deselect everything. Everything's deselected now. Go to the ellipse tool. Go to the layers panel, I should say, and then select the ellipse and then go back to another tool, say circle or custom shape, etc. So I'm just going to go with the circle there and then go to the box there, the path operations and merge shape, shape components. So that's it. It's all been merged into a thing. Well, now you've got that really quite unusual design, maybe a nice logo for someone, who knows? What you can do is go to the direct selection tool and select all of the points. That's what I always like to do when I use the define custom shape. Just down there, define custom shape. Because otherwise what happens, sometimes it's selected, sometimes it's not. So it's that's always, I always find the easiest way of using it. So that's it. You've got it saved to your shapes palette. Right, create another shape. This time create another shape because I'm going to show you another set of features. So make certain both of those shapes are selected. Then go to the Layers panel and Combine Shapes. And there's Unite Shapes. So it's basically the stuff that you were doing before, but now you've just got it in a menu structure. And you may find this easier to use than the, uh, the other approach. So undo that. Then go to Layers again, Layer Menu. Combine Shapes and Subtract Front Shape. And that just chops it away. So it slices away what's... Uh, Everything is removed other than the uh, circle that's not overlapped. Again, with both those shapes selected. Now, of course, you can create multiple. You don't have to, it's not just two, two shapes that you can use. You can use three or four, select them all. And then go to the layer menu again. And combine shapes and subtract, and then all done, chopped away. So it really reduce or model the uh, circle. You could, of course, use combined shapes as well. Just create another circle there and another circle. Again, select both of those circles. 
back up to the layer menu and combine shapes and now unite shape and overlap and again you get that the bit that's overlapped is just left all the rest of it is gone so you've got two circles bit where it crosses over is saved that's it and again the opposite being again layer menu combine shapes and subtract shapes and overlap so anything that's not overlapping is saved the bit where it overlaps is removed Go to the direct selection tool and then you can go to merge shape components. And that's it. It's been merged into a nice single shape. Press return. Now what you can do, you can define that as a custom shape you wish. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extras channel always adding many, many new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, etc. Please add some comments, a dislike or like. Thank you much.